By my count, there are at least 30 vehicles on the market that offer a third row. Now granted, they're not all crossovers, but nonetheless, it really does beg the question, why should someone buy this, the 2015 Toyota Highlander Limited in this case? You know, what does this have to offer that the others don't? Thanks for finding me out here on the old YouTube universe. My name is Greg Cavanaugh, and this is my amateur car review channel, Gallup Journey Test Drives. And I hope to present you guys with a rather unscripted, consumer, unbiased approach that hopefully will answer that question. So stick around. You know, my neighbor actually has, um, not the previous generation, but the generation before that, Highlander, really kind of the first generation that came out with it. And parked side by side, you'd almost think these two are completely different uh, vehicles with different names and everything because they really look very little alike. You know, the fact is Toyota has made this newer Highlander bigger. So the styling has also changed, I think, to belie that size a little bit. Now, I think I would describe the styling as striking, meaning that uh, it's a bit polarizing. Some people think that it strikes you, you know, in a good way, that it's handsome, a good looking vehicle. Other people, not so much. I tend to lean towards the, the handsome side of things. I think it looks pretty good. There's a few things about it that I don't like, but as a whole, I think the front end looks really cool. If not a bit generic, it's a little bit kind of Kia, Kia Hyundai-ish. Um, but the panels here on the side, some of the creasing and, and the squat roof line kind of a la Venza, if you will, gives it gives it kind of a sporty feel to it. And uh, hopefully I think also just kind of makes it look a little bit smaller um, considering that it's longer than it used to be. But as a whole, there's no doubt that you can definitely tell the new 15 um, Highlander apart from its older versions. There's a reality here that I think I need to point out. And I was guilty of this as well. Many people think of the Highlander as competing with vehicles like the Acadia, the Durango and so forth. And the reality is those are really full-size crossovers and Toyota builds this much more as a mid-size crossover. And it's bigger than it used to be, but it's still not full size. In fact, if you quick look at the specs, you can see compared to like say the Acadia um, Traverse, the Enclave, that little generation of GM uh, crossovers, the wheelbase and the over overall length are both 10 inches less than the Acadia. That makes up a huge difference, particularly in one key area the third row. Now, if you are looking for a vehicle where you need to use the third row consistently for say, you know, kids older than six or seven years old, the Highlander is probably not the best choice for you. As I mentioned with say like the Dodge Journey, the Highlander's third row is really better used as an optional set of seats that you may need when you have a couple of extra kids with you or a couple of extra adults and you're not going too far. Um, so let's take a look and I'll show you that a little bit better. Now, when it comes to uh, seating for the second and third row, I think, particularly here with the second row, Toyota's mantra or their goal was flexibility, versatility, and I, I think they hit their goal. There's a lot, of, a lot of choices here when it comes to the seats. First of all, I have the, uh, the captain's chairs option here versus three abreast, and I have to say, I think that's a good way to go. Um, you know, you have the third row if you need to get more people in here. Um, so it, it just eases entry and gives you more space. I think that's a great way to go. If you do go that route, you get kind of this plasticky dual cup holder, a little pseudo console here that flips up and down. It's, it's all right, nothing to write home about. I'm sure it'd be helpful on a trip. Now, using it as a two row crossover, this thing is money. I mean, look where I am. This is my seating position here at 5'8 when I'm driving. You can see sitting behind myself with the seat all the way back, uh, it, it's excessive. I mean, my feet aren't even under the seat in front of me. There's plenty of space here for my head, toes, knees, shoulders, everything, right? So um, as that goes, that's pretty nice. Now, if you are having people in the third row, this does move fore and aft. Now, when you bring it up here to its farthest most position, uh, you create some decent leg room back there for people. And you still have the option of kind of reclining here, depending on how much you like them, the people behind you. Um, but that gives it some versatility. Now here uh, on the limited model, you get your own controls for HVAC, you know, fan and temperature and so forth. And then you also get your own AC outlet down here at the bottom, which is really great for plugging in, you know, entertainment and charging your phones and all that kind of good stuff. So you can also get an optional panorama moonroof that comes way back here. I'm sure that'd make the second row even nicer, but this is a pretty good place to be nonetheless. Um, as you can probably see across the way, the seats do fold down flat as well. So if you fold the third row, you can take in longer items. 
Toyota has also incorporated, you know, this feature. You grab the handle there and it slides forward as well as, um, you know, leans forward, which makes ease, uh, eases in the entry for people, although I'll admit it's not really that great. Someone my size, my age can still kind of make it happen, but I still move pretty well for my age. Uh, but yeah, little kids, it's not a problem. But you know, with the, with the, two, re with the two captain's chairs, it's probably easier just to have them walk around as my kids did. But as a whole, um, yeah, there's some good flexibility there. Let's take a look at this third row and I'll show you that more specifically. All right, so let's do the third row thing. All right, so here I am. In the third row, the second row here is as far forward as it can go and is also as least reclined as it can be. And you can see you really can't get someone in here that's much bigger than me at 5'8". Adults or kid alike, it's not really going to matter much. Um, the biggest thing you can see is how high my knees are relative to my waist. And that's simply because the seat is so close to the floor. I don't know if you can also tell, but I have very little headroom here. So just someone taller than me, it's not gonna do much good back here. You do get a couple of cup holders and you do get your own vent, so that's not too terrible. But again, I just need to reiterate that the Highlander really functions best as a two row crossover that has a third row if you need it occasionally or in a pinch. Now you do have three seat belts back here. So if you had to, had to cram three people back here for a short trip across town or something, it's doable. And obviously if they're little kids, it's even much more doable for longer trips. But as a whole, uh, yeah, you need to be looking at larger crossovers or minivans if you really need a proper third row often. Out here in the back, there's one point I'd like to make right away. You can get this as an optional flip up glass. I don't know why more automakers aren't doing that anymore because it's really handy. You just don't need to open the tailgate that often. Uh, you often can just open this hatch and get what you need out of there. So uh, I wish more people would do that. So option that up as you can. Power tailgate is really nice, especially if you've got little kids and you're carrying a lot of stuff. It just is, I don't know, somewhat slow, I guess you could say. Um, and here is my ubiquitous camping cooler. You guys are probably getting sick of seeing it, but it's easy to grab and it very quickly illustrates the point of how much space you have here. You can fit one. Now, I did mention that this is to be used as a third, three row crossover more occasionally or in a pinch, and here is why. You can fit the camping cooler, but in order to do so, you need that third row bolt upright. Any more upright and they fold down. So it's extremely uncomfortable for the passengers who are sitting there. If you recline it in the least, it won't shut. So uh, it does give you a sense though of what the space is here all the way across. Um, I mean, it's not terrible, but if you're using it very regularly as the three row, row crossover where these are kind of reclined as you'd probably want them to be, pretty easy to do so by the way, um, from here, you can see that you're, you're gonna get only a couple of carry-on size pieces of luggage or some groceries or whatever. Underneath here, you get some storage, although, you know, it is quite shallow and it's taken up by the jack assembly and its, and its accessories. So there's not a ton there. That of course is for jumper cables and other things you just need to keep in there regularly. Now, if you are using this as a two row crossover, you can see the space there is much more ample. It's nice and flat and square. You can get pretty much anything you need to in there. So as a two row crossover, storage here is abundant and it works much better as such. So that would be my recommendation. You're going to have to forgive me a little bit because it seems I've somehow managed to develop allergies in the middle of this shoot. So nonetheless, hopefully you guys can ignore my sniffling. But let's talk driving dynamics. The first thing you're going to notice when driving the Highlander is that it really feels quite manageable. You know, if you think of it as a three row crossover and you compare it to something like the Acadia, uh, you know, which is kind of what I did when I first got in it. I noticed it seemed much smaller, much more manageable and easier to maneuver. And that's because it really is more midsize. It has a shorter wheelbase and it's, sh it's shorter overall in length. And that's a good thing. Uh, it's pretty nice to drive. Now there's, by no means is it sporty, uh, but in today's day and age, uh, we've gotten so good at dynamics with cars that just average cars still aren't floaty or sporty. They're just fine. And that's definitely the case here for the Highlander. The, the steering is quite heavy, oddly, but it, it feels pretty good, it's pretty direct. And the ride is not rough, but it's by no means super smooth and comfortable. 
And I think that's kind of a good thing. There's no excessive body roll or bouncing. And overall, it's just very quiet and calm in here. So there's really no complaints when it comes to those dynamics. It's what it should be for a crossover. Now you can get two powertrains here in the Highlander, although I don't know if anybody really is ever gonna buy the 2.7 liter four cylinder. And that's largely because you, you don't pay any kind of penalty, especially when it comes to fuel economy, when getting the V6. The V6 here mated to a six-speed automatic transmission and all-wheel drive will net you 18 city, 24 highway, and 20 combined. That's pretty much par for the course for the crossover segment that's about this size. But in uh, somewhat of a demerit is that if you get a minivan, you're gonna get more space and better fuel economy. I've said it before and I'm just reminding you. Now the 3.5 liter V6 here makes 270 horsepower, 248 foot-pounds of torque, and it is the ubiquitous 3.5 liter that you can find in almost every Toyota product. In fact, they're putting it in the new Tacoma. And to be honest with you, on paper, it seems a little bit down on power, but here in the Highlander, I think it's a really nice match. Now, that power, that 270 horsepower, comes up really high in the rev range, 6,200 RPM. So you gotta rev it to get that power. But you know, a good example of this was getting on the highway. I was able to get up to freeway speed plus you know 70 miles an hour or more before i actually got to the end of the entrance ramp so yeah if you put your foot in it and you let it rev it's smooth and it pulls it around just well now this thing is rated to tow 5,000 pounds with a towing package and frankly it doesn't have a lot of low end torque so um yeah it's going to feel a little bit labored getting around especially since you feel like you're going to have to put your foot in it but i do think once you do put your foot in it even with uh, a little bit of weight back there it's probably going to feel just fine I had to pull over and stop driving for a moment here because when it comes to talking about the interior and technology, there is just so much here, it's hard for me to concentrate on all that and drive at the same time. So let's get started. First of all, the biggest innovation may seem silly, but it is Toyota's shelf. This is not the only vehicle to have the shelf, but it's awesome. There's a shelf that is underneath the infotainment and HVAC controls. It runs all the way across to the passenger side. And it's just, you know, kind of tall enough and deep enough to hold your phone and other types of electronics and maybe some tissues and stuff like that. It's softly padded. I mean, it's awesome. This one has a nice little pass through where you can run your cable and then that allows you to plug it into the USB jack for charging and infotainment. And they're kind of hard to get to, so it's really nice. You just plug your cable in there, run it up through the port, whatever you call this, access point, and you can just always have it there. Get in the car, grab your phone, plug it in, throw it in there, good to go. So I have to say, a plus on the shelf to Toyota. Now when it comes to infotainment technology, you've got the Intune system here. To be honest with you, it's really powerful, but I found it a little bit cumbersome. Uh, you would get used to it over time. It does have some nice hard buttons there on the side, as well as a couple of knobs to access things, and the screen looks great. So really no complaints there, other than the kind of learning curve on it. Now, this does have the optional JBL sound system, and I do need to be honest with you here, I didn't find it to sound very good, so you might wanna save some money and not get the JBL sound system, and just kinda upgrade some stuff on your own. Now the HVAC controls are really easy to use. I've never had a problem with Toyota ergonomics. The only problem I've always had is that their font is really cartoonish and the buttons are always really big. It's a lot better here. It seems much classier, much nicer. And in fact, that's really the vibe here. It seems like Toyota has put a lot of effort into just kind of taking care of the driver and the front passenger because it's really nice up here. Soft touch materials with nice stitching, the leather's perforated and really nice. And of course this is the limited model. You get uh, heated and cooled seats, which is really cool. Um, the only real problem I had with that is the controls. You go one way to go heated, you flip it the other way to go cooled. And the, the, the detent for the cooled seats, you know, when you get to the zero point to have them either on or off, is not that easy to hit. So um, that would take a little bit of a learning curve, but man, heated and cooled seats are really nice. Here in the center stack, you got a couple of very sharp looking gauges and you got a nice little screen in the center that of course gives you a lot of redundant information that you can control here on the steering wheel. Everything from radio, XM radio, you know, 
know, inf infotainment stuff, but also the navigation, which is really cool. You don't have to take your eyes off and look at the map. It'll just tell you which way you're going. That's very nice. Um, you got some other tech here. You've got, um, you know, hill descent control. You've got a snow mode. You've got blind spot monitoring, and you can get even more controls besides that. This is the all-wheel drive model, so there's a button for lockout. It's not like a center diff or anything. It just kind of keeps it in all-wheel drive. Uh, it does have a manumatic shifting mode. I'm not sure who's really going to use that a lot in the Highlander, but it is there. Now, this is kind of, to me, a controversial thing, and that is the center armrest. It's They call it roll top, like a, you know, like an old roll top desk. And you push it in, and then it kind of clamshells or, or opens like that. And it's very deep, and you could easily throw a woman's purse in there. And there's also another charging cigarette lighter port in there. Um, and then it has like a secondary little shelf that can go up top for when you're throwing other things in there. Uh, the real problem I had with it was simply that I grew up driving manual transmission cars, so I always want to have my hand here on the shifter, um, the shifter, really the gear selector while you're driving, and these little, the little, I don't know what you want to call them, handles, if you will, for opening the center armrest just kind of rub on your forearm, and I don't like that. But I guess if you kind of didn't have to have your hand on the gear selector all the time, it wouldn't be that big of a deal. But here, up front, you know, it's... It's a real nice place to be, of course, especially in the limited trim. Loaded with tech, very easy to use, and it has a shelf. Now at 43,500 hours as tested, this limited is not cheap. Now granted, there's a lot of tech in here, a lot of luxury, but you can even go up above this yet. You can go platinum and you can go hybrid. So there, there, there's more price to be had there and more luxury to be had. Now when you're evaluating the Highlander though, regardless of package and hopefully kind of regardless of price, it's got some pretty good inherent core characteristics. It's maneuverable, it's a good size, if you don't need a third row all the time, it pretty much is gonna do what everybody needs a typical vehicle to do, and then some. So why does it stick out in the three row segment? Well, if you factor in Toyota's build quality, its reputation, and more importantly, its resale value, then you start to look at the Highlander and say, this might be a really smart buy if I am looking for a crossover. If you need to save some money, don't get a limited. A big thanks to the folks over at Amigo, Toyota, John, and so forth. Thanks for letting me drive the 2015 Toyota Highlander. It's been great. And of course, a big thanks to all of you guys for obviously watching, but liking, please, sharing, subscribing, all of those things help. And of course, I look forward to your comments. I'll see what I can do to respond. See you guys next time. Yeah, I can't.